Uh, she's with JP Marketing. Jane, thanks for coming in. Today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Um, you're uh, involved with JP Marketing, so why don't we start with that a little bit about what you do there, and then we're going to talk about the family uh, business biz network. Yep, absolutely. Uh, JP Marketing, we started, my husband and I, Jane and Paul, really creative <laughs> business name. Uh, we started 18 years ago. And uh, essentially what we set out to do was, was to help businesses invest their marketing dollars as wisely as possible. And you know, 18 years ago that was important, um, but today it's more, than, more important than ever. And advertisers have many more choices available to them, and uh, it's our job to try to help them make the best choices and the best decisions with their advertising dollars and, and re maximize the return on their investment so mm -hmm. that they can continue to grow, as you said. There, there you go. And it's, uh, yeah, and it's uh, with the media, and our, our markets have changed so much now yes. that uh, this, all the old models are gone and in with, in with the new, and, you know, it takes what it takes. Uh, family Business Network or yes. initiative. T talk to us about that. Yes. Yes. Actually, when we first started JP Marketing, we started with six clients. And all six of those clients were family businesses. We really enjoyed those relationships and in fact retained most of those relationships the entire our entire business life. So now 18 years later, we still work with a number of those family businesses we originally started with. And a couple of years ago, late 2009, everybody was sort of struggling economically and, and we were as well. And it really forced us to sort of step back and ask ourselves, where do we really want to focus? Where do we really want to be experts in our industry? And we realized that we really enjoy working with family businesses the most, um, particularly when there's multiple generations involved. Um, we love the, you know, the family dynamic. And more than anything, um, family businesses are driven by a value system that is much different than you might find in a traditional corporate world. Mm -hmm. So we set out about a year ago to become the family business experts. And what we realized was there's really not a lot of research out there on family business marketing. There's small business marketing and there's corporate marketing, but there's not really something that specifically speaks to the family business. And so we started this family business initiative. It's called Family Biz Buzz. And our goal is to study family businesses and we have plenty of them right here in our own Central Valley, right. and find out their secrets to success. What has made them successful? What drives them to be successful? How have they utilized marketing to, to improve and grow and uh, sustain their companies over the years in hopes that we can find some learnings through that and then share that with other family mm -hmm. businesses so that they might be able to apply those those findings. I get really excited about it. Well, that's, that's good. <laughs> we, uh, we love enthusiasm on this show. And uh, enthusiasm is actually what drives marketing. Absolutely. If you're not excited about your product, no one else is going to care. <laughs> that's, that's the bottom line. Absolutely true. And uh, Jim and I in the next segment will be talking about that too. If you don't believe in what you sell, you'll never sell it. Absolutely. And true. so anyway, uh, yeah, there's some... Uh, so far in, in your study of, of family businesses, and I actually have some names of very successful local family businesses that have been business in business now for over 100 years that you may want to get hooked up with. would love to. Uh, what are some of the some of the dynamics revolving around family businesses? Because we have a lot of family business owners watch this show. Uh, something that you can just kind of share with us today. What, yeah. Some of the stuff that you've already picked out initially is what's driving this. Yeah, you know, um, really interesting. Uh, we've interviewed six family businesses so far, and in, in, in going through this interview process with, the, with them, what, we, what fundamentally drives their business decisions is um, doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And it sounds so simple, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Just do the right thing whatever it may be, even when times are hard or even if it's gonna cost you money out of your own pocket, mm -hmm. do the right thing for the customer mm -hmm. or for the vendor. And we're already seeing that as a theme, mm -hmm. as a commitment in these family businesses that they believe maybe in the short term it costs them a little bit of money to do the right thing, but in the long term it has sustained their business. Yeah, and doing, and doing consistently doing the right thing even when no one is watching. Yes. Because believe it or not, is the, the trap in that is someone is always watching. 
It'll. I believe it will catch you eventually. You betcha. Yes. Ab absolutely. The. Uh, uh, in addition to, and you know, the, doing the right thing revolves all, all around customer service. Yes. And, uh, and and being specific, and I think a lot of it has to do with family businesses is taking the time to learn to know your clients. Who are your clients and, and what are their needs? That's a big part of it. It's, it's kind of interesting that you mention that because I think one of the lost arts um, is listening skills. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and that's one thing that we, looking back, one thing we've really been committed to over the years, and so now we've really embraced this idea that at JP, we are good listeners. And so this whole process of research and understanding family businesses is entirely a process of listening. It's absolutely asking good questions, but then really listening to what they're saying. So I absolutely agree with that. Oh, yeah, and it's very important. And it's, it's uh, especially with a personality that's structured like mine, listening is hard. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard work because I'm just bubbling with all these opinions all the time. And, mm -hmm. and uh, so in my day-to-day -day work, that's what makes you estate, good in your job. In though. my, in my real estate business though, particularly as I have to listen, even, even like when I'm, uh, uh, representing, uh, a seller of a home, when I'm on the, yes. the listing agent, you know, I always tell my sellers, the market will tell you what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. If you're if you're listening, the market will tell you what you're looking for. Yeah. Same thing for no matter what business you're in. Your market, if you're out there and have some visibility, they will tell you what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's true. So uh, are you going to be going into any of the dynamics? Because family businesses have their own dynamics. Yes, they do. And many of them fa fail because they are family businesses also. Yes. The, the transfer from the first generation to the second and from the fourth to the fifth. Those seem to be critical on yes. what I've studied on that. Yes. So you get the 100-year-old businesses, it's that fourth generation starts to struggle. Well, and, and we really see, you know, at each succession level, a significant drop-off. And for, uh, you know, we have... Uh, here in the Valley, we have a number of companies that are on their fourth and fifth generation and mm -hmm. doing great, but they really are the elite. Mm -hmm. There's so few companies that make it and, and really understanding um, what it is that has continued to make them successful because not only is it a, if you're a hundred year old company, it's not just a family dynamic issue. The world around you has changed so much. Mm -hmm. So what have you done to stay innovative and, and, and relevant? you know, as the economy and the times and technology changes over the years. It's fascinating. Oh, yeah. Well, I take a 100-year-old business. Uh, one in particular I'm thinking actually was founded in the late 1800s, so this is before cars. Yes. And now they're still here. In, is in, that Bet Springs? No. No? no. Which no. company Different is that? Different company. I'll, oh, uh, I'm you'll gonna have leave to tell me about it. I'm going to leave them undisclosed for right now okay. because I'm going to be bringing them on as advertisers. They don't know it yet, but it's coming. Fantastic. So, anyway. But, uh, so, uh, on the, what are some other things you can share, too, for, because mm -hmm. we, we, what we want to do is, is, is really promote your initiative, and mm -hmm. so really give our viewers something, a reason why they're going to need to start paying attention to you. Yeah. Well, and one thing people can do, if, if, you're, if you own a family business and, you, and you're curious, um, we have a, a blog at familybizbuzz.com, and you can go there, and we have a lot of resources there. We have uh, websites that you can link to. We have LinkedIn groups, Facebook groups, a number of things where you can get connected to other people that are family business owners, mm -hmm. as well as to a support group, mm -hmm. uh, networks. Um, and then we also have interviews. So some of these interviews that we're doing with family businesses, mm -hmm. you'll find clips of those interviews that you can watch, and, and watch and learn. Right, because the beautiful thing about hearing other family businesses is they struggle the same way your family business mm -hmm. does, but let's hear how they solved it. And maybe that applies to your business and becoming exactly. a resource that way. We have a Facebook as well that, that people can follow and get updates there. Down the road, what we'd like to do is to um, find some funding sources, whether that be grant funds or, or what have you, to sort of take this initiative more on a regional or national level so that we really get a more global picture of family businesses across the country. Because um, the Small Business Administration says that 90% of the businesses in the United States are family owned and operated. Mm -hmm. That's huge. If we can make family business successful, we can make this country successful. 
Ab absolutely, and they are the largest employer segment also. That is small, correct. Small business uh, is, is what drives the economy. And yep. it's just a shame that those that uh, many of whom we've elected to get political for a moment have failed to realize that. You know, our voice isn't loud enough. 